in some state media to report whatever suits the political leadership. My iPhone is my best friend because I, it keeps me updated of global breaking news right on my palm. News come to us through our mobile phones right in a matter of lightning speed. Now it is very easy for journalists for facts checking before they publish their news, views, or interviews. The web browser makes every access for journalists to get and give information ethically and correctly. The content of the news itself should be appealing and maintaining and professionalism to the eye of the viewers and readers. Aside from the World Wide Web media that ranges from digital videos to photos, which have significantly influenced journalism, it will be impossible to make any content for journalists without all the necessary technological tools and equipments. Therefore, the availability of the media tools helps journalists to achieve their goals also, the artificial intelligence is becoming an important tool to journalism's future. Now we get both magazine and newspapers right in the web browsers and the readers like us are the ones who make social media as the fastest way for breaking news. We don't need to wait for the news reader to anchor the news via TV channels and radio. While we should make use of the social media for the larger benefit and welfare of the society, at the same time, we have to be aware of the social media. If not handled carefully, it tends to destroy gratitude, makes life messier. Sometimes fake social media spread news of their own interests, hurting, uh, hurting the uh, personal standing of uh, leadership also. We find our own sayings and statements twisted out of context. Journalists must ensure a story that interests what people want to see or reach audiences with a well-structured, faithful, and useful information, which indeed increases the demand in general. Sometimes we see modern technology being abused and misused to weaken public confidence in democratic elections and boost support for populism, jingoism, and authoritarianism. I think technology in journalism is helpful to make the society aware and careful. It provides opportunities to connect with readers and will enhance effectively in the field of journalism with more advantages. Let us overwhelm the challenges it brings and seize the opportunities for the larger welfare of the humanity. Let us not forget in the new world of post-COVID-19 journalism will definitely transform into tech journalism. I wish you all the best and thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Zota Kurala, Chairperson of GPK Foundation America. Now I will uh, introduce each of the panelists and then we uh, allocate time of seven to ten minutes for their speech on the topic provided or, or the presentation they might have. So first I will introduce today now Dr. Sekar Khwirala, the in influential leader and, and central working committee member of Nepali Congress. Please welcome him here. Next, Namaste. We, have, next Namaste. we have Himangshu Bias, Former uh, Himansu Bia, Bia, Secretary of All India Congress National Committee and Chairman of Foreign Trade Committee, Gujarat Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Please welcome Thank Himansu. you. Thank you, Somnadi. Next, we have Honorable Asis Ray, 
Ashish Ray is the longest serving Indian foreign correspondent. He is also former editor at large at CNN, now international affairs analyst on BBC and contributor to the Spectator, Financial Times and Business Standard. He is also the author of famous book called Led to Rest. Please welcome Honorable Ashish Ray. He is from London. Next, we have Sanam Arora, Chairperson, National Indian Students and Alum Alumni Union, United Kingdom. Sanam Arora, please welcome Sanam Arora. Next, we have Dr. Pratista Singh, author and writer, doctorate in Italian languages and politics, former professor in Delhi University, India. Please welcome Dr. Pratista Singh. Next, we have Andrea Wen, writer and interna international journalist, public speaker and actress, and filmmaker from Spain. Please welcome Andrea Wang. Next, we have Farduz Asker. Uh, I don't see her now again, some problem with her techno. She might have, she's having technical difficulty. Oh, Farduz Asker, right there. Oh, I saw now. <laughs> Let's welcome Farduz Asker, founder of Oscar Foundation and prominent Jordanian journalist. Next, we have Julie Dennis, musician and project coordinator, and worked closely with famous artist George Michael. Julie Dennis. <laughs> Next. I don't really know what George has got to do with anything, but there you are. There are many other things. <laughs> Thank you. As Priyanka Sarma, senior correspondent and Gujarat Bureau Chief of Republic TV. Priyanka Sarma. Then we have Dr. Indrajit S. Saluja, Chief Editor and Publisher of the Indian Panorama, United States. He will be joining in a soon. Then we have Gopal Baraili, Chief Editor of Nissan News and Nepal's Journalist Union Central Member and also the Vice President of National Dalit Journalist Union of Nepal, Gopal Baraili. Please welcome Gopal Baraili. Then we have a couple of journalists joining. Uh, I just got the message. Let me read, read out their names. Let, let, let me introduce them. We have uh, Achyut Regni, journalist, senior journalist from Nepal. Then we have Ajay Kumar Rai, Vice President of Nepal Trade Union Congress and Global Board Member of International Transport Workers Federation from London, Ajay Kumar Rai. And as I go along with the, with the uh, event, uh, so if some prominent figure will join, I'll, I'll acknowledge them as we go along. Now, without any delay, I will welcome Honorable Assis Ray for his presentation on the uh, on the like uh, on on he's the only longest serving Indian foreign correspondent and I believe in uh, among the panelists he's also the um, senior most journalist here. Let us listen to him. Please welcome Assis Ray. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Let me begin by saying that I had the pleasure of interviewing Prime Minister G.P. Koirala in Kathmandu in the first half of the 1990s, when I was uh, the South Asia Bureau Chief of CNN. It was a very pleasant experience. I do believe that uh, relations between Nepal and India were extremely cordial at that uh, point of time. Having said that, I think the ethics and principles of journalism are no different when it comes to covering a pandemic. It's no different from covering political affairs because what you need to uphold first and foremost is the truth. So 
anything that is suppression of the truth is something media need to reject now this is a difficult proposition because most journalists would not be familiar with the intricacies of medicine the intricacies of infection and therefore one has to depend to a large extent on expert opinion now that opinion would come by and large from doctors and health experts and particularly those who specialize in this area of epidemics and pandemics and so that said i think one has to draw a consensus from the experts and come to a conclusion which basically would amount to the truth although that may be less than accurate because we are into what we call virgin territory this is new ground we don't know what exactly this infection is about and therefore you could be right but you could be marginally wrong even if you're putting in your best effort that said there's also this factor i think uh, sujata koirala referred to this that uh, when it came to the 1918 plague it wasn't until many years later that the actual numbers of casualties came out in this case we live in an era which is much more modern it's 2020 and therefore it may not be too long before the absolute truth emerges at the same time i do believe that today the figures that are coming out about infections about deaths and the various methods of treatment which are working or not working will be known sooner rather than later as compared to what happened a century ago now talking about south asia because a lot of people here are from south asia i think uh, india is an alarming case the best case in south asia is bhutan but at the moment india is alarming because the largest number of cases rising new cases per day is in india and the whole world and having said that i think i also believe that it's not just india but most countries in the world where the reporting is under reporting in other words we don't really know if what the official figures are are actually correct we have to go by those figures because we don't have evidence to the contrary as yet so we go by the official figures but one day i do believe and i suspect that figures will emerge which would be somewhat different from what they are at the moment in most countries in the world and when i say that what i mean is this that particularly in a developing country you do not know if there are poor people who are dying of covid-19 without diagnosis and treatment so therefore they do not come into the official figures but they may well have died of covid we don't know so there will be an assessment in due course and i feel that uh, we are into this territory of the unknown at the same time i think it does not matter as far as a journalist is concerned we need to uphold to the best of our knowledge to the best of our abilities and with total honesty and integrity the truth and once that is done i think we are okay there will always be in every country an effort on the part of the government to give a spin to the figure for instance a government will say that uh, the recovery rate is very high but then the recovery rate is high in most parts of the world it's nothing unique in any one country so there we are we have to look at the right side of it not be alarmist be supportive but at the same time not suppress the truth thank you thank you so much sasis reji for your valuable opinion and if some might have some questions later we'll get back to you next we have sanam arora chairperson 
of National Indian Students and Alum Alumni Union, United Kingdom. Salam Hi, firstly, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. It's a great pleasure, um, especially interacting with Ms. Karaila and, and the rest of the esteemed panelists. So thank you. Um, Ashish has spoken. So from a journalist's perspective, I'm not sure what more I could add. What I can add is two perspectives. One to, to this whole debate. Um, one is from the point of view of a strategy consultant, which is what I am in my day-to-day -day life. Um, and, and part of my role is to help lots of asset managers, wealth managers, and other agencies try and figure out how they can best um, you know, enter new markets or look at profitability through a different lens, et cetera. My other role, which you referred to, Somnaji, is where I'm the chairperson of a student. Yeah, you share Pakunata? Um, where we look after all students. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bit of disturbance. Please um, unmute your phone. Please unmute your phone. Like I already instructed earlier, if someone if someone is speaking, please, the rest of the panelists, please unmute your phone. Right, thank you. Um, so my view really here is, is a couple of things. I think COVID-19, this pandemic that we're facing, has it's not done anything different to journalism than what it's done to other sectors, right? There were a number of trends that were already in place, and COVID-19 has in many ways accelerated the, the pace towards those trends. So for instance, and, and at the heart of all of this is, is the sort of trend about profitability and economics. So um, to that end, what has COVID-19 done? It's, it's gotten us to a position of, you know, greater suppression of truth in some ways, because, um, you know, there's also in parallel a rise of populism around the world. And um, as populism grows, there's a greater desire to stop, you know, as you were saying, Somnaji, the real numbers of COVID-19 from coming out, um, et cetera. So to, at the intersection of this populism is, is an economic trend, which has been exaggerated and accelerated by COVID-19. But as Ashish was saying, you know, I think the first and foremost principle, speaking from a consumer perspective, is that a journalist will give me the truth. But at the same time, speaking from an economic perspective, journalism is an expensive affair. You know, running a newsroom, running a news outlet, these aren't cheap affairs. So how do we bring about an intersection wherein real truth can come out through established news organizations without compromising on the integrity of the content and without becoming an NGO, right? It is a business at the end of the day. So it is possible to do well by doing good. It is possible to have profit with a purpose. Um, and I think my, as, as a consumer of news, as a consumer of honest uh, journalism, there are a few things that need to happen. To, to my mind, the first of those is that um, there should be a fund that is created for independent media organizations, which lots of credible organizations, including fact checkers, for example, Alt News, should be able to access. Um, and therein we rely on the generosity of philanthropists, the generosity of lots of individuals who, who want real news to come out. Um, the second thing that I think urgently needs to happen is the, uh, the, the normal person on the street needs to be educated about how to consume news because there is a proliferation of content out there. There is too much information available. Um, people don't necessarily anymore know where to go. And here, the issue that at the heart of all of this is technology, right? Those who weren't consuming newspapers before, i.e. the poorest of the poor, unfortunately, they're still not getting information. So to, the, to them, if anything, technology has increased the information that's available, not decreased it. But the, the biggest threat here is misinformation and disinformation. And part of that is this whole ongoing debate we've been seeing, for example, with Facebook, right? So this whole point of um, disinformation being spread through filter bubbles, I'm sure everyone here is aware of the concept of filter bubbles, which is really algorithmically giving you what you already are attuned to in the way that uncomfortable truths no longer even show up on your newsfeed. So those of us, the middle classes, the sort of more liberal elites of the world who are consuming social media increasingly, and those who weren't previously consuming information through the likes of newspapers, but are now consuming a lot more through social media, the issue we're all facing is one of filter bubbles. And this is where the role of an independent media fund that 
more of these honest news outlets can have access to and apply for funding from becomes really crucial. And at the same time, it is we all need to drive a change towards education. Education starts at schools. Education starts in universities. People need to be retaught how to consume information. Now, I, I went to university at the LSE, and the first thing one of my professors told us was, right, first thing you need to learn is how to Google. And all of us sat back and laughed, going, oh, well, we're, you know, we're really, we think we're intelligent people. We're, you know, all sort of adults here, you know, at university, and we've all reached the LSE, so we must be smart. And, and he said, well, shudder it out, all out. The first thing you need to know is how to Google. And that's quite a strong statement, because what that tells us is we don't know how to consume information. And when faced with an overload of information, um, this is something that needs to start from right from school. So as a consumer, we need to understand what are the trends that are being used to manipulate us and therefore to manipulate democracy as it exists worldwide. What are the tools we can use? So I, for instance, I no longer actually visit most news websites. Um, my news now will come from Twitter handles that I know on, uh, you know, I have actually made the effort to go and hunt, for example, in India, honest reporters that I know will report the truth. I will follow their handles directly. I no longer need to follow massive news organizations because I no longer have trust in what they're saying. It's unfortunate, but it's true. So if I can use Twitter, for example, to source my own truth and truth of information, can we as a collective come up with training modules for students at schools to know how to hunt for information? Um, can we you know, create greater accountability of, 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 of our governments, for example, to ensure that we are able to consume information that's correct and honest? Um, and to my mind, those the, the threats to accountability, the threats to press freedom, they've always existed pre-COVID, post-COVID, they were always there. COVID's probably exaggerated them and then accelerated them. Um, but the media was never particularly free anyway, unfortunately, is, is the way I see it. Um, and the, you know, the final thing I want to end with is by saying that, again, as a consumer, my, my ability to consume information is very limited. The time I will spend on reading something is very limited. And I, Unfortunately, the world we live in, it's all about how the story is being told to me. So journalism, yes, it remains the, the science of factual reporting, but it's increasingly become the art of storytelling. And, and um, it's always been that way. Again, this is not something new, but it has become the art of storytelling. So as long, so we need to find new and creative ways of communicating the right story in a way that people would want to consume it um, and, and, and actually let that take its course in, in settling into people's information systems worldwide. Uh, that's the, those are the remarks I wanted to make to start with. Thank you so much, uh, Sanam Arora, for your views, opinions, and remarks and the suggestions so that we keep learning something new every day and, and make a better uh, journalist in the field of journalism. Like truth, truth, it takes time, but truth always is the victory, right? So next, I will invite president of Wall Street News Agency, Jiao Ming, for your remarks. President of Wall Street News Agency, Yang Ming. Yes, did you hear me? Yes, now. Oh, Go good, ahead. good, 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 good. Hello, everybody. I'm very glad to attend this Zoom conference by some, some, some of us. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult to pronounce your beautiful name. Uh -huh. I will learn later from you. Okay. And uh, everybody, in this special period after the breakout of these coronaviruses, we are suffering a lot, especially we cannot meet face by face. Uh, we cannot eat in a restaurant like last time you did, you might. But it's very fortunate that we can hold this meeting through this Zoom conference. <clears throat> we can meet uh, uh, eventually through this video face by face. 
this is a long time we couldn't we couldn't uh, do it so i hope everybody stay safe and uh, and be healthy stay healthy and stay safe it is life is more important than money than anything else than fame so <coughs> take this opportunity i wish all of you uh, especially these top leaders from your KP Foundation, is it right? GP GP Koirala Foundation. GP or KP? GP Koirala Foundation, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Also, uh, very difficult for me to pronounce, but I will learn it later from you. And, uh, and uh, we are older friends. Taken from the past, uh, we haven't, uh, after the establishment of our Wall Street News Agency, and we meet several times and uh, very happy to be invited to attend uh, several meetings of youth held before the coronavirus break out. And especially you give me the special gift, a patch, a, a hat, I, I take it in my office. And Let's what is your take on, what is your take on technology in journalism? Yes. And also, I, I'm very happy I sent my newspapers to you. And the other day, I went to your office for a visit, and I saw my newspapers there. Uh, uh, it's, maybe it's a little pity that we only print in Chinese, but we did print some, uh, some English newspapers, especially about United Nations meetings, that conference GUC 2020 uh, blockchain and the digital uh, digital currency, uh, global uh, uh, the conference, and uh, and uh, we we did that print that newspaper, and maybe I will print an English newspaper for you. Yeah, I hope today you could. I'm. Uh, uh, I know you are recording. You send me the recording of our conference. Everybody is speaking. And uh, I will put in my, we have uh, in my website. And uh, actually we have a better effect to do electronic newspaper than a paper because uh, every week or every two weeks we publish our newspapers, what's your news agency? But these days nobody dare to take out the newspaper in their hands and read it and, and so we stopped uh, paper printing for f during this uh, pandemic uh, period, but later on we will restore. And uh, and uh, again, thank you very very much, Samir Jimir, for uh, inviting me to here to attend this Zoom conference. And I'm very glad to meet a lot of beautiful ladies like uh, Samala Aurora. And this gentleman, uh, Tara Cassoni, and many others. Thank you very much. I wish. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jiaoning, uh, the president. Of... Nice day. And yeah, again, I wish everybody of us and the whole mankind stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. You should have focused on technology and journalism. That was the topic to talk about today. So, anyway. Thank you for your well wishes, well wishes, well wishes, and, 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 and greetings. Thanks again. Now I would like to acknowledge the prominent figures who who, who just joined this uh, global series. Uh, President uh, of Province Number One, Nepal, from. Nepal Trade Union Congress, Naren Babu Karki, and Dharma Bhatrai from Transport Worker Union, and Bhagavati Karka, President from Beautician Union, and also the uh, invited central member of GPK Foundation, and Abhay Kumar Rai, journalist from Nepal. So next, I would like to invite Andrea Chen, the international journalist from Spain. Thank you very much. And thanks again for having me. 
Uh, it's so enriching to listen to such, such good perceptions and to be able to share views with all these intellectuals. Uh, I believe that it's so important that people of this uh, high preeminency, like the Honorable Suyata Korala, cares about the freedom of expression. And I believe that today's journalist seeks, seeks to find a democratic and independent voice but in many cases, that is only the theory. Uh, the responsibility of a journalist or a media outlet is to transmit truthfulness in everything they broadcast. And in many ways, technologies have affected the distorting of information in the media and not, not in a positive way because uh, they, of course, facilitate the spreading of fake news far more rapidly than in the past. But they also open the door to all sorts of interpretations and opinions. Because nowadays, anyone with a smartphone can become a journalist and a news promoter. But is it a bad thing that everyone can contribute with a different fraction of the story? Because I believe that journalists, journalism was born to bring the truth to the people, to tell what is really happening. And the current system is very individualistic and they only tell a part of the story. The one that they are more interested in, in broadcasting. But what about the other half? Uh, the other half is what the people can tell. But uh, as in everything, I believe that it's very needed to find a balance. Uh, just, as, um, just as the past speaker talked about, at the end of the day, the absolute truth came out. And just like uh, the Samana Aurora said, I love that she highlighted the importance of education. Uh, it's more important to learn how to Google that we think today. It's as important as learning math because everybody thinks that Google is now the wisest source of information. And we absolutely believe 90% of what we read when actually the only 50% of the content of the internet is truthful. Then nevertheless, I do not see technology as a threat to global journalism. It will be considered as a threat if we try to destroy journalism. But I think that the only intent is to transform it. In time, everything is transformed and changes are needed in all areas. Uh, that does not mean that we should not be aware of the risk and how they may affect us. Uh, it all depends on the approach. For example, Twitter. Uh, Twitter has become something similar to a news agency, but being a totally open forum. Young people prefer to consult the news on social media rather than on the platforms that many consider, many consider outdated, like on the TV or on press. So people see this as a negative thing because uh, now we are all very vulnerable to believe fake news uh, because for many people just because it's published on the internet and has been widely shared they think that it must be truth but however people are becoming more aware of this fact they are becoming aware of this vulnerability and this is generating more critical thinking that is absolutely necessary to develop more the rational sense of logic in us so it's actually good for the people to start being critical on everything they are consuming. Now, thanks to the technology, if I live in a very small village in Spain, I can find out what is happening in a small village in Nepal or in Syria, which I will most likely never hear about in my local press. Now, in that sense, technology can bring us much more closer together and involve us in all kinds of events that we will otherwise consider irrelevant or we will simply ignore. Technology is only a tool. Ethics though, does not depend on technology, but on the human use of technology. And its effects will not be other than the consequences of how we choose to use it. Technologies are only a part of what of what the development of society implies. And what is really important is where we direct the focus of the progress to move on and take a step forwards and not backwards. Journalism needs to be reborn in neutrality and transparency. And in the new post-COVID world, 
we can find the perfect opportunity to start again and create something towards peace. I think it is better to see the half of glass and decide what content, how we're going to fill it with which content. Uh, so to finish, I will just say that we should invite people to question everything. So as journalists, we should promote critical thinking in this new era of technology. And for the journalists, for the journalists themselves, they should uh, be more spreading sensibility and awareness on what content they are writing. Just now, journalism, it's also about the storytelling, as Aurora said. So that's very important. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening to me and let me share this panel with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea Wen. Uh, she, she's an international journalist, uh, like I already introduced her, and she is from Spain. And we will get back to you in QA session once our audiences have some questions to ask you. Thank you. Now, moving forward, I will invite Ferdus Asker, prominent Jordanian journalist. Please welcome Ferdus Asker. Uh, please unmute your phone. Please unmute. Fardus had some real technical problems the last time because of where she was. I'm just wondering if that's still happening now. Okay. For those, ask her, please unmute your phone. Or we get back to you later. Oh, okay, good. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry because uh, now I'm in Georgia. Before I was in South Carolina, and the internet okay. everywhere is different. Anyhow, thank you for having me, and I'm so sorry to let you maybe two minutes. Um, sir, I'm very happy to talk about the technology and journalism these days, because I'm um, from uh, the mid or middle generation in journalism. And in that time, the technology, it's big difference between now and before. Uh, what's happening now about COVID-19 has proved that the technology is very dangerous in journalism now. It's very dangerous in um, some kind of uh, articles. Before that, we work hard to get the right and the truth news, and we're running everywhere to catch the good news, the good st story for the readers. Now we find it so easy, but this, the easier and the faster, there is many dangerous it's the ethics, it changed the ethics, but it's more effectively. It's mean, the ethics is the same. And I'm very proud that the new generation in journalism, they have good ethics and working in the same line. Not all of them, but they are very proud of, their, of themselves because they get the fact very fast and the news they collect but very fast and the media everywhere they can catch many stories in the same minute 
But in the same minute, if you read the story from different resources, you will find that the technology, it's make it change and very dangerous. Now, this is a good example about COVID-19. Sometimes we read about this medication treatment in this country and that country, but if you research about all these news, you will find the political things, it's move all these around us. I will not mention any country or how, how, how it's big, 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 big story, maybe bigger than what I think. This is the dangerous, I mean, from the new technology. The technology is very, very good for us, but if we comparing, we find the dangerous and uh, And honest and many things, it's not it's not clear. Technology and journalism during crisis and uh, past uh, COVID-19, it's very convenient. We haven't in this time any kind of the new technology. I can believe it. Every minute, if you go for Facebook, if you go for CNN, if you go for Fox News, if you research very, very um, sensitive, you can find where is the wrong and how we can give the readers good news and good ability. During this new technology, I wish to um, not take it seriously because it's very dangerous now, especially in my, uh, in my country or in the Middle East or in Nepal or Indonesia or anywhere because the people haven't time to read. They just click Facebook news, breaking news, the picture, every minute they see the war everywhere. The journalists and the war, they couldn't move now because the bombing everywhere, the killing everywhere. I would like to ask all my friends now, my colleague, how we can use the new technology in these days by all these wars around us. It's the war for technology, journalism around the world, how we can use it, how we can move it for ourselves to serve all these people from hunger, from uneducated, from death, from everywhere. I'm very happy to uh, make my voice loud today with this small group, but more effective. This is what I believe. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all my colleagues with all my respect for you and my president and the prime minister and everywhere. Having, wish you uh, having a very good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity for your okay. you. valuable suggestions and your concerns. So once we have questions by our viewers, we'll get back to you again. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to acknowledge Morong President of Nepal Trade Union, Susil Koirala, then National President of Nepal Trade Union Congress, Brother Pushkar Acharya. Next, I would like to invite Priyanka Sarma, Senior Correspondent and Gujarat Bureau Chief of Republic TV, Priyanka Sharma. Please, un yes. Hello, Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's, it's really great to be a panelist among all of these 
seeing the uh, people on the dais and sharing the dais with them. And a lot of interesting conversations that have really already uh, transpired with all these people who have spoken about uh, the advancement of technology and how technology is probably uh, also something that is proving to be a pedal in these dangerous times that uh, uh, you know, Honorable Deputy PM Sujat Dakora has also said, and uh, former Deputy PM Manishi. So she had also said that how uh, journalism can be affected by the advancement in technology. And also the kind of situation Sorry, that we are... to disturb you. Your your microphone yeah. is yeah. Can you check your microphone? It's not like a irritating noise. Am I audible now? Uh, check your microphone. The wire or something is loose or something is like it's cracking the voice. Can you check your yeah, microphone? Yeah, it's breaking. Yeah. yeah, breaking breaking the voice. Yeah. yeah. Can you check your microphone? Is it, is it audible now? Uh, no. no. There are some it's issues. Not very clear, Priyanka. Okay, let me just fix that. You're saying there's a lot of crackling in the voice. It sounds like the lead. It sounds like the lead input that's causing the problem. It's that kind of sound. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. All right, I'll, I'll try my best to uh, fix that as we speak. Uh, you know, new new ways of doing these webinars we're still learning, I guess. Um, yeah. So, you know, what I, I was saying, that uh, as no, can... our panelists have also already Priyanka is no, still no, cracking. No, yeah, you fix up, yeah. fix up the mic or you speak from your phone. <laughs> fix up the mic and otherwise speak from your phone, no problem. Yeah. yeah can you hear me now? Yes, better. Ah, better. Thank you. This is better, yeah. Perfect. Better? perfect. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, there are a lot of journalists on the panel as well, and all of them have expressed this opinion that uh, these are dangerous times that we're living in and that the role of technology is evolving as we go. And this is, so I think somebody said something very interesting. This is a virgin territory. Uh, and I agree with that completely because all of us are in this situation for the first time. We don't quite completely comprehend as to how to deal with this particular situation at hand and also what the role of journalism will be as and when we go along and learn how to live with this new normal that has uh, that has now come into place in our lives, in all of our collective lives, uh, beyond geographical, uh, political and ideological borders, uh, I must say. And uh, uh, very interestingly, even from the very beginning, we have been seeing that there has been an advancement in technology. There is an evolution of technology that, uh, that we have seen uh, as a species collectively. But now that we are looking at a pandemic, we're looking at a pandemic situation where we are forced to innovate. We are forced to look for a new way of doing things, specifically in journalism. So if I talk about that particular industry, uh, there is a lot of things that have changed. And a lot of people did say that there are a lot of perils to the social media that has now come out. And I would just like to add to that because uh, we have... Uh, we have evolved in terms of a species. We have had a technological revolution as well. But in this time of a pandemic, the social media has, is something that people have turned to. It has somehow democratized the entire way that the news industry functions. So, but with that also comes a level of perils that come with the social media as well. So when we look at that in particular, uh, what it changes how a journalist will uh, carry out their duty uh, on the ground. It, 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 there is a level of change that we see in the way that a reporter on the ground would now work as compared to what an anchor or a print journalist would do. So now, what I was also referring to earlier was that there's a TV industry has also evolved since I am uh, a part of the TV industry in India. I'd like to speak about that in particular that the evolution of the TV industry is also such as of now, that the, uh, that the middleman has gone away. When, the, when 
while there are several journalists who raise the issue about the credibility of a news break when we look at tv media you are only showing what is the reality on the ground there is no way that you could uh, plagiarize that or you could uh, you could show it uh, in a different way than what it actually exists to be so when you go on the ground there is no other uh, Uh, there's no other way than to show the ground reality of the situation so i think somebody posed a very nice question that uh, what is the solution to using this technology responsibly i would like to add to that it is to cross check each and everything that is catered to you as news but also rely on audio visual mediums and specifically on ground reports that reporters submit to you on either tv channels or on social media and uh, so that is something that the reporters really add uh, in terms of uh, looking at the news industry in the current times so when we look at the perils of social media uh, i think uh, somebody else also said very interesting that the way we we don't know how to consume information as of now so i guess the way to consume this information was to be will also be to be conscious about the, uh, the quality of the news break that you're consuming so you also look at ground reports for example if i could talk about uh, anecdotal evidences that i could submit in the form of the experience that i've had as a journalist uh, in, on the ground during the time of a pandemic when walking the streets was also like walking a ghost town because there was absolutely nobody outside you were the only one who was trying to take information from limited resources because we were not allowed to roam around too much it was also very dangerous to go to meet a lot of people so even in that time uh, it is also the job of the reporter or the journalist who's on the ground to take information which will be which will prove to be useful and also credible at the same time for the consumers because i think there was a lot of discussion about the consumers of news and you know how they are to be still to be trained as to how they supposed to be consuming one particular news piece so when you look at that and when i talk about uh, talking about that uh, experience of mine as well that when you are out on the streets during the time of a pandemic there are a lot of things that go wrong so even if today we sit here talking to people from different countries you know none of us are sitting in the same country i think and we all of us are conversing about things that are uh, very uh, common to all of us in all of our societies during the time of a pandemic but even now uh, the job of somebody to be on the ground is even more essential so there might be a level of technological evolution technological advancement but the uh, importance or the credibility that the ground report brings uh, that the ground report is brought to you by a journalist will always be uh, something that will be even more credible than what you would consume on social media per se so i think that is something that cannot be taken away from the field of journalism yes there are a lot of uh, people who did talk about artificial intelligence and they did and you know there is a, a perennial paranoia of the collective human conscience that artificial intelligence is going to take over our jobs and there is a level of uh, truth to that as well because there is an a level of technological advancement because of it there is, there is a lot of job cut and even in our media industry we are seeing that a lot of uh, journalists are losing their jobs but i would go to an extent where i would say that the people who call this a human error is actually a human element with which the the news has to be catered to the consumers the viewers the masses in general so i think the level of artificial intelligence that we're talking about it cannot ever completely replace a journalist or it cannot completely replace the human element with which a a journalist is going to bring you the news so that being said of course uh, there is a lot of debate about how we going to look at journalism in the coming few years and how it's going to evolve in the space of a pandemic of a global pandemic uh, but one take away from for me would be perhaps that the ground report the uh, work that a journalist puts into going to the ground taking information putting it all together and then catering it to the viewers that is something that cannot be ever uh, uh, considered inferior to what you would probably consume on social media and also uh, yes we have always log- uh, talked about social media in uh, a lot of negative sense of the uh, the medium as well but uh, in today's time i think it is even more important 
to understand the perils of social media because this crowdsourcing of information that a lot of channels and newspapers adhere to uh, there is a level of uh, uh, there is they, they don't completely always get to cross check everything and they're in a hurry to actually break the news uh, as a lot of journalists would be able to uh, empathize with me when i say this because we all face the same pressure of a news break so that i think that checking has to be done there has to be uh, a level of uh, checking on the facts that we get from the ground and also before giving a checking that has to be done and of course we rightfully pointed out and because i have been saying that it's the democratization of the news industry there is a level of independence that all news uh, portals and online uh, uh, you know self uh, self acclaimed journalists also have on social media uh, but at the same time there has to be uh, some kind of conscious uh, there, there has to be a conscious choice that the consumers or the readers or the even the journalists will have to make in order to see the source that they are consuming this particular news break from so of course uh, because the topic is also about the ethic and ethics uh, you know the ethics i think come into play here when uh, when we put the responsibility of cross checking facts on the journalist and of course the effects are going to be subsequently uh, visible as in when we learn to live with this new normal of a pandemic and you know how the news industry is going to evolve into a better stage in a newer stage where uh, journalists will have to be will be given more importance to be out there on the ground and bringing the reports to the news uh, to the consumers and the viewers so much uh, priyanka sharma ji for your valuable inputs as you are the real ground breaking news breaking uh, journalist and uh, nice to hear your experiences and we hope we can learn and work together in post covid 19 in the new world and always welcome for your suggestions and ideas how to make this better hit next now let's just break up in in the panel of journalists uh, speakers and move out to the politicians view on technology in journalism let's please welcome uh, dr sekar koirala central working committee member of nepali congress and the influential leader of nepal dr sekar koirala thank you somnath ji chief person of this talk technology in journalism sujata koirala ji and the expert panelist uh, i am a medical doctor i have no knowledge about journalism as such but what i am seeing these days is because of the populism all over the world journalism is also becoming more populist this is elements view regarding the post new world of post covid 19 19 covid 19 has impeded the life of people in the globe and media cannot stay far from it to save and strengthen journalism media owners are compelled to choose very few options out of which just a second to save and strengthen journalism media owners are compelled to choose very few options out of some possibilities consequently consequently traditional print media is in the process of collapsing 
considered as the strong pillars of democracy at least for two centuries, journalism is now under threat. Even though the print media play an imperative role in the society and has become only one source to rural communities in many nations in the absence of internet access, the trend is slowly changing. The data shows that about 50% circulations for newspapers has already been declined and the rest is in the process. Media house running print versions is under immense trend too. The media house is highly affected of this pandemic with the loss of advertising revenues and less sales. Most of the media houses has already announced staff layoffs, layoffs and canceled their print operations and has downsized significantly. The print media has been declining in recent years due to the uptake of digital news in our context. Unless we take swift and decisive measures, the industry will be undoubtedly decimated. The pandemic has added fuel to the fire in it. Nobody can gainsay the fact that democracy cannot function without having systemic journalism for which it should play the role of watchdog. It is therefore the mushrooming online portals in these days should be systematized. Efforts to save journalism is applauded. However, government should scrutinize them too. And this is also true that in Nepal, media house should make the transition from print to, print to online media to sustain during COVID-19 for which media owners must be practical Innovations and creativity to build a strong online presence is a need of today. As Nepal is still struggling with broadband penetration and expensive and data and electricity costs, it is a foremost priority to have access of internet with secured and archived online. Media House should be supported to continue informing to the people, for the people, by the people, and even in the current situation for which government should intervene to the struggling media house during post COVID-19. Nepal government should be equally responsible to make media house sustain in this difficult situation to migrate from print media to online platform as media plays the role of watchdog. Several media workers will definitely lose their jobs in the meantime if nothing significant will be done in the next few months from the government side. Sustaining digital media and to ensure their role to navigate through this dire time, governments, politicians and those in power should not left unscrutinized. In response to COVID-19 in particular, Google launched the Journalism Emergency Relief Fund while Facebook established the COVID-19 local news relief fund to help newsroom maintain operations during the pandemic. Their recent programs like the Google News Initiative and the Facebook Journalism Project that support online media and equality journalism train newsrooms and combat disinformation. Nepal government should also impose tax on big tech to support and strengthen independent online media. Since journalism is not safe and can be kept and removed the content as per wish, it is clear that even if there is a problem in it, the effect will not change. As the member of smartphone users has increased in Nepal too, its importance and impact seems to be increasing. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sekhar Khoirala, for your valuable remarks on technology in journalism. As you said, you are a medical doctor, not mm, familiar uh, on the issue on the journalism, but we we have learned, you got the data from Nepal. Thank you, thank you again. Now, I'd love to invite Julie Dennis magician and project coordinator from London, United Kingdom. Julie Hi, Dennis. Hi, sorry, I couldn't find my mute, my unmute. Hello, I'm Julie, hi. Um, it's really interesting because I 
started thinking I knew what I was going to talk about, but there's so much to react to. And one of the things about Zoom is it's it's so hard to have that lively debate, you know what I mean? That sort of reaction to a certain point. And so I may sound a little bit disjointed, but I'm going to try and come back to the things that come up for me. Um, my orientation is I thought it was the reason I thought it was quite funny when George Michael was at the front because it's like one person I've worked with and somehow people seem to pick up on that I think because they love George so much it's like hello <laughs> so the George is always in context but yeah, it's quite interesting artists, I've been <laughs> sorry one of my favorite artists George Michael well, exactly that's what I mean I think as George takes over do you know what I mean yeah during that's my high school I used to listen to his songs <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, it's amazing. He was amazing working with him. But interestingly, my I'm a musician, first and foremost, and a composer. And um, I graduated in psychology uh, at York University. And, I, um, and I've and i got a, a master's in music and composition from the Guildhall. So that's my qualification for being involved in research in the music industry and the psychology of the music industry. And so for quite some time now, I've been... Um, working on, you know, how to find more effective interventions for creatives in terms of their mental health. And one of the things I often say is that we've had a bit of a, we've had a bit of a pre-run on the sort of things that are happening to people in terms of their mental health now in the context of the uh, COVID virus. But um, yeah, so, um, but we're talking today about journalism and I was, um, but first of all, I, I would like to talk first of all about technology generally, because um, one of the things that happened when first technology sort of came into the music business was that everybody started digitizing the, the music libraries and um, everything was digital and getting rid of all their CDs, getting rid of their vinyl, not having anything in the real world to touch. And uh, there was quite quickly a backlash against that because we're talking about quickly, we've got to invest in, you know, getting the technology there so that people can receive the technological information. But actually, I think there's a really good argument for just taking a step back and saying, do we need to find ourselves utterly dependent upon the technology, the electricity? Do we need to be utterly dependent on that as we move in, in this environment to not touching each other, not speaking to each other except through this? And that's what's causing the mental health crisis right across the board with everyone whereas there was groups that we, we used to think those groups are more vulnerable to mental health everybody is suffering from the mental health impact of the isolation the lack of certainty everything that we are, we're all suffering from here and now I'm absolutely sure but one of the things about what we have to do is quickly get on to getting the technology to these places where they've got no technology get the investment in there I would really suggest that we take a step back and say Okay, let's think about that, but let's also reinvest in securing that which we have created already. And there's also the thing about customer use. Of, you know, when people said, I just want to touch a piece of vinyl. I just want to put my vinyl on and I want to put my record on. And I want to, I want to take the inner sleeve of my CD. I want to read it. I want to have it as something that makes me connected to the artists that I love. And I love reading the broadsheets. I love reading that. I cannot be, well, I, say, I can't be asked reading the news on my computer because I get exhausted. It's the same as if I do more than three Zoom calls in a day, I'm going up the wall. I don't want to look at people on the screen all the time. Sometimes I want to read Pride and Prejudice in a book. You know what I mean? And I think it's the same with journalism. Somebody has written something 30 years ago and it's still there in written print. There's nothing better than seeing that context there. Nothing's happened to it. It hasn't been delivered to me by another context. You know, so I just wanted to say that about um, technology and us being so quick to embrace it is okay, but let's not leave behind the baby with the bathwater. Do you know what I mean? Throw another baby with the bathwater bit, I think, sometimes. And it come, I just wanted to come into technology in general because for me, when I'm talking about journalists, music business press, really, or entertainment press, and I want to talk about context. When we talk about, oh, people just have to be tr you know, truthful and it's truthful if it's on the ground. Well, the truth is always in context, always in the context of the person. It's in the context of who they're gathering the news for. And it's in the context of the agenda of the people they're gathering the news for. And 
it's particularly that you know we talk about journalism as if it's one thing you know it's it's not one entity it's lots of different entities and uh, like there's investigative journalism or scientific journalism or and the music business journalism is not about finding truth and getting to the hard hitting facts it's about selling records their agenda is the music business making sure they increase profits of the better known artists getting their buzz going and it's the same as what's created a problem inside the industry for people who don't want to do that with the industry i recently went right under the radar because I'd been very unwell myself and um, I was applying for something and unless they could see my online presence they it was all, almost like they were saying I was irrelevant you know I'm I'm cracking on as they say in Liverpool I'm getting older you know and like where my daughter will be able she'd probably write three albums in a week on an iPhone do you know what I mean but I'm still half I've got a foot in both worlds in a place in none in some ways but um, this utter dependency in your identity inside the technology, which is totally driven by somebody else's agenda, somebody's idea of truth, somebody's idea of what it is they want to achieve by giving you the information. We can't just separate it. So as long as you've got people on the ground and they're telling the truth, how do we know they're telling the truth? Who do we know they're telling the truth for? Do you know what I mean? We don't know that. And it's about how we receive information as much as how we produce it. And it's as much about us as journalists saying, I want to be sure that people receive the information I give them in the way that it was intended. And I want to be sure that the integrity I have is declared and clear so that the pe people can begin to be directed towards truth. Because you really can't, with, with all the misinformation and disinformation that the, the first journalist was talking about, so I can't remember her name, sorry. She was talking about this problem of trying to separate out, filter out, having filter bubbles. It's not just that like, we might think about that because we have a different orientation because we're used to writing, looking for the evidence and qualifying ourselves. But you can't decide that everybody's gonna suddenly educate themselves and become skilled in that, do you know what I mean? And I'll take it back to um, now to my orientation, which is in mental health and the music industry. And, um, but, uh, and doctors and scientists, because recently we've been really affected by the reports on, we were just coming back to doing live music and I've been working a lot on trying to make live music safe here. And um, the science has been very dubious. Uh, a couple of comments were made by a few scientists about aerosol and choirs. Uh, it was basically information taken out of context and the government had a knee-jerk reaction and that reaction drove policy and where the industry was desperate to get back into work people were had invested in you know events and said great we're going to get back we just shut everyone down now when they shut everyone down it stops people want to invest invest in live music and it also profoundly affects the mental health of the people who thought they were just about starting to get back to work and it happened because of bad science now, I think if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, actually, and talk about the technicalization, technology isn't about now. It started then. You know, it started when they technicalized mental health and gave the responsibility to doctors instead of the community. When they technicalized physical health and made us have to go to experts to understand immunology. You know, we, you know it's not rocket science immunology. It's not that hard. People don't have to be that bright. But we've been convinced as a society that we have to be clever and we have to go to the scientists because only they can understand our bodies, only they can understand our mental health. But actually, communities are very good at looking after each other's mental health and always were before. And actually, scientists are proving to be very, very bad at it. You know, so when we talk about technology as a whole thing and journalism as a whole thing, we are so, we are so bludgeoned by context and agenda. And I think it, we really need to step back and really almost that sort of sense of um, really taking our time to meditate on what this is. It's not, oh, that's a solution. Let's find more technology. Let's invest more in technology. We just need more information. We don't, we sort of need less information. We need information to come from one-to-one -one sources, trusted sources. And that's, I'm not saying this to these, I'm not saying, and therefore, I fixed everything. I'm just saying, let's be realistic. We can say this until we're blue in the face. We can talk a lot and say nothing. It doesn't matter. 
unless we understand exactly how it's delivered that information and that people understand the integrity of that delivery, then we might as well sit at home and twiddle our thumbs as journalists. It's pointless. That knee-jerk reaction from the government in the UK has single-handedly profoundly affected the mental health of millions of people in this country in a two-week period. The suicide rate went up in that time. Uh, in the Basically, in the, in the music industry, the um, basic, psychological crisis and suicide is three times more there than in other industry, other similar industries, because there are all these certain factors which are the same, which impact musicians differently. And so musicians had to then, even though the science was already there about aerosol and immunology and, uh, you know, um, uh, how infectious aerosol was, because of this knee-jerk reaction, we had to go back as an industry and do the science again. And then the science has come back only yesterday saying, actually, that was a bad call because it's no different than talking. You know, you can still work outside and it's perfectly safe. And I've been trying to set up something called um, a zero R event license. Thank you. Where we can say, we can guarantee we've got zero R when we're here. And unless we can, it's not going on. And I think it's about journalism and us saying, taking back control, not, not saying, oh, this is the information and then waiting for the government to make policy. Let's say, no, that's not okay. You can't make policy on bad science. We as journalists are, are gonna to say to you, no, not good enough because you're impacting things wrongly. And we're gonna show you the evidence. We're gonna collect the evidence from the scientists that know and we're gonna put it in front of you so that that policy is not driven by fear. When governments are doing it by fear, then it's our responsibility to make sure that we get ahead of the story all of the time. Music Thank business, you, Julie. Yeah, so... Business lawyers are like, music business lawyers aren't about that. They're not about what you guys are about. But, uh, uh, yeah, shut up now. I'll shut up now. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Yeah, we'll get back to you second session for if there are any questions. Thank you. By you. Thank you for your remarks. Now, uh, we are running out of time. Uh, the next, I will uh, invite Gopal Barali. Chief Editor of Nissan News, and he is the central member of Nepal's Journalists Union, and also the Vice President of National Dalit Journalists Association of Nepal, Gopal Bharati. Thank you, thank you. Chairman of the program, Honorable Shekhar Kodala, Shekhar Kodala, senior journalist from different countries. First of all, I would like sorry. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thanks to organize GP Kurala Foundation US President Soma Shimadai for giving me opportunity to speak at this event. While the world has been hit, why the corona epidemic 31,935 initiative? While the world has been hit by the corona epidemic, it has also affected Nepal. There are, there are, sorry.
looks like he got lost uh, on the internet. Next uh, uh, is Gopal Barel. Is he, are you there? I don't see him. In, uh, no. Okay. So as he's joining back, so I will acknowledge our GP Kerala Foundation America Central member, Vigyan Kanal is here. Vigyan Kanal is here, uh, Central member of GPK Foundation America. Now, I'd like to invite Dr. Pratista Singh for her remarks. Dr. Pratista Singh. Dr. Pratista Singh. Uh, I don't see her either. Uh, next, uh, I see we will be joining back, I believe. Next, I would like to invite as a speaker, final panelist of this session, Himangsu Vyazji, Secretary, All India Central Committee, uh, All India Congress National Committee, Secretary of All India Congress National Committee, Himangsu Vyazji. Unmute, please. Thank you, Somnath ji. And uh, it is very nice meeting to all of uh, participants from all over the world. It is a great, uh, great, great pleasure for me to join you in this conference. Basically, we were talking about the social media misuse and fake news. From that, it has come that we must do something like this, and you accepted. Okay. And you decided that we will do this definitely. And some of my, my friend have joined this. Right. And they've given their views very well. And uh, basically, fake news, I'm going to talk more on that. Because in politics, I face and we face a lot of fake news problem, in particularly in social media. Because uh, these days, other medias are mainly owned by the uh, business groups, and they are very much suppressed by the ruling party. So mostly they have become the mouthpiece of uh, government, ruling party, always. Social media is one of the instrument where people can give their views independently. But in that also, they have entered heavily. Like recently, there is a uh, there was an article in Wall Street Journal about the Facebook in India playing a major role in the elections by the ruling party. They have taken over the whole thing. And fake news is one of the main issues going on because fake news spreads faster than fact. Misinformation or disinformation in digital media, there is no editing in it because anybody can put anything. Previously, Facebook and uh, Twitter, they were not removing this type of information. But these days, I think Facebook and Twitter, they are monitoring and they have started uh, editing and removing uh, fake news and uh, hate speeches and uh, the write-up which can create problem in the society. WhatsApp is also once again a big thing because there are 400 million WhatsApp users in India. And every, every, every month, 2 million WhatsApp groups, uh, they, they are deleting because of this fake news problem. We have to basically take the responsibility of our own write-up because we are just seeing and forwarding. So there is no credibility sometimes. So neutrally, we have to think what we are writing, what we have to write, because everything is going in the society and it will react 
so uh, some countries like china they are not allowing uh, international facebook and other thing because they have their own thing so now countries are working on it then they have to create such platform that where they can their people can control all that not the international forces basically social media use in journalism or anybody for in common masses it is a instrument for the developmental activities like public problem public grievances it can be easily reached to the authorities a small municipality if the people are very active in whatsapp they can create a group and always go to the authorities to solve their problem so we have forgot journalism we have think that social media we thought that there is a breaking news always there is some sensational news but we are not thinking on the line of development gandhi ji was also a writer editor publisher during the freedom movement but mission that he is working for the freedom movement and public welfare so they will not allow advertisement even in their newspaper in those days in those days there was no uh, internet also available but gandhi ji's newspapers were so popular in those days because it was a public interest thing in that but we have uh, completely forgotten that part uh, somnath ji uh, i must uh, take a note of suggestion from sanam she has told that there should be a fund for independent news groups because most of the channels and newspapers are owned by businessmen today so there is no neutralism and sometime media has become like a courts they are running the trials so media trials sometime innocent people die you know these are the issues we are facing these days uh, i must say gandhi ji was always telling when a newspaper is a mean of making profit serial mass serious mal practices are likely so motto of the journalism motto of the social media is basically to help people help public in their own routine life also thank you very much somnath ji because i will not take much time there are many other speakers and you have to ask uh, questions to our panelists also right right thank you. you told me that i must speak so i have spoken yes. thank you thank very you. much thank you so much himal subhiyasi thank you thank you for your great support help and uh, initiation that guide me through to make this program happen today thanks again thank you sir uh before uh the uh, gopal braili is just joined but before he speaks uh ashish ray has to leave for another event there is one questions for him from one of our viewers so if ashish ray is still on i would love to ask that questions from one of our viewers yes i am here oh, okay the one of our viewers says you are so the most senior most journalist that i see today in the program and by your experiences as a journal, journal in journalism in the field of journalism how what would you see as a perspective in a post covid 19 or the new world about fearless favorless and bribeless journalists well i think uh... journalism news media in general were already in a very difficult space before covid uh, took place some of the points have been mentioned by others ownership collusion with government a lack of uh, clarity lack of impartiality and not following the ethics and principles of journalism which as i emphasized earlier has got to be the truth a newspaper may have an opinion of its own that opinion may be supportive of a government but on the news pages distortion is unacceptable so i think the problem that existed still exists and will continue to exist till i think 
governments worldwide get together to find a solution for a new information order because the international information order which has existed now for decades is really rotting at the edges and therefore you have to find a way out of this it's not going to be easy because there are vested interests in controlling media and so therefore to come out of it will be difficult what covid has done it has had a devastating effect on media because revenue has dried up and that's where i think news media have to reinvent themselves because the print circulation which used to be the bread and butter of news media is unlikely to increase rapidly in developing countries where literacy is going up it may still increase but the pace of increase will slow down and more and more people will gather their news from their handsets and that is the future so therefore i think a subscription model rather than asking for do donations in this country where i live the united kingdom the guardian is a premier a caring newspaper but it does not charge for its news content what it does is that it appeals to people to donate to them and this is a voluntary rather than compulsory situation and i don't think this voluntary model is working because the guardian is losing money it is laying off journalists and that i think is something which is a phenomenon happening all over the world because journalists are losing their jobs because news media are unable to sustain themselves i think the days of 24 hour news channels on television are coming to an end i worked for the pioneering organization in this genre which is cnn and cnn international but i think the days of such models are coming to an end because people are getting news on their mobile phones instantly and therefore the value of breaking news on a tv channel which is running news 24 hours is not as valuable as it used to be there are one other uh, point which i'd like to make which is this as a conclusion two if i may social media is not news media social media is social media it does carry information but equally it carries disinformation and that's an area again to address for authorities all over the world because we are reaching a situation where disinformation is overwhelming correct information and there again unless there's a coming together of political parties in countries coming together of governments on an international platform like the united nations i don't think it's going to happen finally the worst cases of covid have been in countries who fall into one or more of these categories one where governments have been in denial two where a government has been disorganized and three where a government has been unscientific in its approach and you look at that you look at the united states of america you look at brazil you look at mexico you look at the united kingdom which is the worst case in europe and you look at india i you will find that in these countries the government's concerned fall into one or more of these three categories so those are my final words thank you very much for having me i hope we meet again and continue this discussion thank you so much ashish ray for your valuable input and your valuable time on this ninth global Zoom virtual conference of GPK Foundation America, and we look forward to working with you closely. Thank you. Thank you again. Somnadi, yes. Somnadi, Pratista mostly she has joined again. Pratista. Okay, Let's so if she is there. Okay, let's see. Yes, she is here. Let us welcome Pratista Singh, Dr. Pratista Singh, for her remarks on this panel. Yes. 
Okay. Yes, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Wow, well, the discussion has been so, so engaging and so interesting so far. Um, I had a few phone calls and so a few lapses, but I'm, I was really, I mean, I agreed with most of what most of the speakers said. Uh, I just want to say a few things about it, uh, about journalism and especially in today's day and age, taking on from what uh, Madam Koirala said, and I completely agree that we rely on our iPhones and on our smartphones so much today because not because um, they are with us all the time, but because actually uh, the phone, the smartphone brings a sense of democracy to knowledge, to information, because what happens is that the same knowledge which I have or anybody else has is circulated amongst everyone who has a smartphone. So it democratizes uh, information and therefore I think it's a great tool, but the problem with democracy and journalism, I think, is is the chicken and the egg situation. Because, um, I mean, obviously, you need great journalism to support a fantastic democracy. But at the same time, I think a great, a, a good, open-hearted journalism shows what kind of a democracy you are living in. So it is. It it works both ways. It it's a circle that goes around. And therefore, I feel in COVID times, especially. Uh, although fake news and all sorts of news have been circulating uh, across the world, uh, even before, much, much, much before all of this, and there are new scandals with Facebook and other media all the time. But I think the exciting thing right now is, is the expand, this explosion of information which is everywhere. And therefore, I think that what Sanam said makes a lot of sense that, that you know, we should know how to pick and choose. We should know how to to analyze the news that we are being uh, subjected to. So I am a big supporter for journalism of all kinds. I mean, I think democracy should allow all sorts of, uh, of journalism, but at the same time, it should allow people to... Check ...the facts. They should be common personally. I work a lot with rural... of the world because I had a self in an organized sector, especially who work in rural areas, I feel that for them to access knowledge, imagine a village which gets one newspaper, you know, every day, for them to, a lot of those houses to have smartphones is a great sense of power, even though I agree that they get a lot of fake news, they are subjected to a lot of WhatsApp, uh, you know, untrue stories, etc. But the fact that it opens up the world for them, I think that itself is a huge deal. Of course, it will have to be checked. Of course, it will have to be controlled. Of course, it will have to be regulated in some manner. But I feel that in COVID times, especially, I feel that today, if the world can say that we are in a better space, that things are getting better, that things are slowly improving. We can say that because of the power of information, because in 1918, we did not have that. Today, the whole world knows that we're supposed to wear a mask, that we're supposed to have our gloves on, et cetera, et cetera. You know that, and what's going on, everybody knows. If people in the remotest part of the world know that something like this is going on and they try to take care and they try to take the necessary precautions. Therefore, I really appreciate this explosion of information, especially for people who are in far-flung areas, in rural areas, in areas where there is less connectivity. But of course, there's a need for regulation. And I'm really happy to be a part of this panel and to be able to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Patista Singhji. <clears throat> She's also the doctor in it Italian languages. She can work, right? And then former professor at Delhi University. Thanks again for sharing your views. Uh, now, that, that ends the, the discussion of our panelists. Now we are moving into the second session of uh, QA, and I have a few questions to ask uh, in respective panel that I received from the viewers, which we are already, which are uh, online already, live on uh, Facebook and other social media. Now this question goes to for those Oscar. Uh, how dangerous and what is the situation? right now to cover the tech journalism, like you said, in Middle East.
please unmute please unmute please unmute your hello my question is to priyanka uh, how do we expect uh, uh, hello can you hear me yes go ahead hello yeah hello. yeah my question is to priyanka uh, namaste priyanka uh, uh, i'm here my, yeah my yeah. question is to you is how do you expect the, the, the customers to be made aware of the right source of uh, news like here, you know sir. that like that yeah Hello. Okay, so uh, that goes after this. So, can you answer this question for this asker, a prominent yeah. Jordan, Jordanian journalist? Yes. Mm. Uh, it's good. It's it's good question for me. There is no protection now for any journalist. Looks like in Syria, like uh, now in Beirut, like because it's not because of the war, because something. personality between these parties and these parties there is no real democracy in journalism in the middle east really i was in country uh, under the military for 25 years when we were being uh, right any political things about the prime minister about the king about the queen about the military they take us for a uh, court to ask us and after the democracy all of the people all the kings all the prime minister the government everything they said we have a freedom till the sky where is it now where is it the freedom they said you have a technology you have uh, good news it's come to you by by a minute around the world but i couldn't use it till now in democracy it's very few and less freedom for the journalists in the middle east i think now it's around the the world look for united states freedom and big freedom and by minute they will cancel your facebook your twitter your blah 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 this is big problem for the journalist around the world and especially on the middle east there is no protection we lost a lot of our colleague in syria in iraq and everywhere the power the money power it's the king of the war and the kingdom of any journalism association what what i can talk about this more than this if you feel that united nations just make umbrella of protection for her journalist around the world yes i respect this association and foundation it's to protect us when they called me to go for iraq and the the pumping and killing and i went i was we were being three women from the middle east covering all these in iraq and even that we couldn't move from the house of the student at that time in baghdad to go out and see what what happening what i shall write what i will tell my people what i tell what happening for the women for the children for 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 no no sir there is no protection these days for the journalist uh, around the world and i'm so sorry for how many journalists we lost and god bless them sold their soul and i'm very happy today to uh, ask me this question because i have a lot in my mind to tell all my colleague around the world who's the journalist now the journalist if you mean i'm very very thankful and appreciate for 
our colleague now from the CNN, he, he was talk. The journalism, it's not Facebook and Twitter. And yes, sir, you are right. This is not news. This is not a news agency or a news. Um, no, it's the media. And I'm so sorry for the president, the big president around the world. He used it as a news. Twitter, Facebook, and they fighting. China, America, look what's happening. This is not journalists that I'm studying for 25 years in this. I'm so proud for you and my colleague again. And I think this is my answer for your question. Thank you. Thank you so much for this, Oscar. So what was the Snehil decides uh, question to Priyanka Sarma? Yeah, hello. Yes. Yeah, my question is very yeah. simple. Uh, yeah, Priyanka, I would like to ask you, how do we expect the customers yeah. to um, be made aware of the right source of uh, news? Like, because as we are talking about this fake, uh, uh, fake news and all, so well, how, can you throw some light on the same thing? All right, this goes to Priyanka Sarma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thanks, Neil. That's a fantastic question, actually. Uh, so, there's something called caveat answer, which means buyers beware. And another thing, as we were talking yeah, about. Again, breaking up, you know, uh, the voice. Yeah. 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 It's, it's breaking up. Just, just one yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as I was saying, it, it, it's a fantastic question, Snehil. Uh, uh, you know, there's something called caveat answer, which is uh, known as buyer's beware. And, uh, you know, something that uh, a lot of people did talk about, that there is a level of education that is required for the consumers. And uh, as I have seen uh, the educational, uh, uh, the syllabus that people really have, there is no mention of research methodology. It is only in colleges and universities that people are even introduced to a subject like that. I think this should be done at the school level, at a more primary level, so that people can actually comprehend and how they have to actually uh, research upon whatever new piece that they might be consuming. I don't think about Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka ji. Next, next, I have a question yeah. for uh, Wall Street News Agency President yeah. Yu Ziyang Min. Are you still there, Yu Ziyang Min? Yes, I have a question for you from our viewers. Uh, did you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay the question goes to you. What is the truthfulness of tech news, like technologies, the news through technology uh, right now coming in during the crisis of COVID and COVID and right now from oh, China? Me. What do you, what do you, yeah. Excuse me, I didn't catch you. Okay. Uh, this is what the questions for you from one of our viewers. What is the truthful, truthfulness that's the real fact, real reality of the news that is coming from the technology side, like tech journalism. How how reliability and how truthful is the news that is coming during the post COVID nineteen from China? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, yes, yes. As you know, as you know that uh, these days we are not a traditional news uh, of uh, organizations only. We have self media. So in this world, self media, they, their technology because 
of the uh, development of this uh, G4 and the G5, and even I read today G6, America is developing, and it's very convenient for people doing media through uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Yeah, we can express and the news, even as soon as it's happening, there's a big news in America, in Canada, in Asia, China, and in Nepal, or in Europe, uh, in Russia. Any place you will get a big news or even a small news, people do it immediately. They through they just do it uh, through uh, just doing the through, I mean self media. Just like I use my uh, cellular phone, I use the WeChat in Chinese TikTok, the Chinese medium, and we direct broadcasting. So people do this our meeting immediately. This is actually a news tool through our Wall Street News Agency or our Wall Street Satellite Television. So we, we are broadcasting very, very quickly. This actually, I didn't go through my editorial department. Uh, this is Lomo. If you go into editorial department and our employees, our managers, editors are resting today take a rest because it's a Sunday, right? And uh, but it's very convenient for me sitting here in this conference, conference, conference room, traditionally crowded with people, but uh, now since the modern technology of this Zoom technology, and uh, we even could do it through during this uh, continuous, continuous continuation and outbreak and continuation of coronaviruses. But we still happily do it. And the people all over the world are watching us through our Wall Street News Agency and uh, through our Wall Street Satellite uh, Television. But I'm doing through my uh, iPhone, through my iPhone. So, and then just the, the viewer, one or more, the viewer just asked you the question, what is the percentage of real, real, real packs or, or the truthfulness of, a, of the Chinese news that came out during COVID-19? So uh, that, that, that's the main question. This is of, uh, a very good question yeah. and a difficult question for me because I'm originally, I was born from China. I immigrated to this country to be a citizen of US of USA and China and the USA are fighting in many, many fields. And uh, it's very awkward for me to answer this question, but uh, I should say something. The news and uh, you know, I think Chinese take a quick step at the beginning of the uh, out uh, Outbreaks of this coronavirus viruses happening in Wuhan city, Hubei province, China. That's uh, <clears throat> that means they close the city, and uh, uh, on June 21st, June 21st, 2020. You know what is that day? That is Chinese New Year's Day. Chinese uh, took a different uh, news day day and we get news from a lot from the newspaper, a lot from the television, that's later. But we have friends in Wuhan, they send this news to us uh, very quickly. And, uh, and uh, at the beginning, people are at panic and uh, at, uh, don't, don't, not knowing what is happening and some people even said, I will die very soon. And really some people died. Just, uh, this is just uh, the, the same thing as we began in March 22nd. And uh, New York uh, also sealed. And uh, 
we stay at home orders and we are very uh, feel horrified and uh, and uh, the news spread uh, uh, very quickly and uh, uh, some we saw and that is truth in china in wuhan we eventually didn't see it but most of the news and uh, uh, not by the Chinese television, not by the Chinese newspaper, but by the Chinese people in China, in Wuhan city, Hubei province, China. They reported something. Yeah, I think that's very true. But, uh, but uh, later on, uh, Chinese traditional medical herb, herbs helped a lot. Uh, we have like nickel rice, like uh, uh, many, many Chinese traditional, many, many Chinese traditional uh, medicine herbs, herbs uh, and uh, prevent this just like 17 years ago when that SARS happening uh, in Guangzhou city, Guangdong province, later on outbreak in Beijing, Chinese took a strict control and control the SARS very quickly. And just like they did this time, control this Corona viruses. So on May the 28th, China's Wuhan city is reopening, was reopening. Uh, and they, they just go back to normal, but they're repeating, repeating. This Corona viruses will not go away. They're repeating, and, uh, and uh, last month they're repeating in Beijing. Then recently I get some news they're repeating in the northern part of China, like Jilin province and Heilongjiang province and the leveling Russia. And also in uh, Xinjiang province, also leveling Russia and many other countries. And uh, uh, so they repeating, repeating in US, I, be, I see uh, people around me is uh, going back to Loma, but we should be very much careful and, uh, and uh, still go back to the world at the beginning. I'm um, ending this, my answering this question. We should, uh, everybody, we must stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Next question goes to this. Uh, Arun Sundaria had one question. I would like Arunji, uh, you should ask the question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Yes. You're audible. Okay. My question is uh, regarding the I mean, uh, making some independent fund for the media, uh, where even the good uh, organizations working in the private sector also gets that fund from there. The government should allocate some fund and the media working in the private sector should also assess that fund. Uh, without any bias, they must get it. Unlike Prasar Bharti, can it happen? Yeah, the question is open to all the journalists. Yeah, Priyanka, if you could answer this, or oh, anyone else who could answer this. Just about funding, wasn't it? Where we're going to get funding to have an independent, an independent, independent fund from the government. Arun, Arun, uh, uh, I can tell you because in the political system, I know better. When Prasar Bharati also started like an independent thing, but it is never independent. So you don't expect any fund from the government to give to independent because whatever government will decide is independent. And they will be always run by the government. So it should be private funding what Sanam suggested. It should be a private funding 
people who are really interested to do some good work in the society and do something welfare of people something neutrally they want to give uh, to uh, not without uh, uh, no biases and uh, not capitalist not 100% leftist but in the center they think i think uh, uh, they should come out uh, with the fund and uh, provide to the people uh, and there should be a, a judiciary who can check them that they are really doing good job then they can definitely fund i think that is a government you don't expect yeah i, I think it's quite uh, himanshu ji is absolutely right it's quite counterproductive to expect that governments will ensure independence that's the whole point is that a government funded platform will never be as independent as you'd like it to be that in that case it would become chinese media right we don't want that um so i think the whole point is that if we have if we encourage private donations from individuals all over the world and actually run very active philanthropic campaigns that can encourage the likes of bill gates who's already doing a lot but there are so many philanthropists in the world who often actually say surprisingly that they don't necessarily know how to utilize their money and put it to best goals so there are international organizations the international fact checking organization is a wonderful network for instance which refuses um propagandist outlets when they apply to become fact checkers and and get that certification those sorts of international conglomerates need to come together and create a a, a sort of platform where private individuals philanthropists and corporations who have a good heart can contribute and and that and so government will never be the answer to that unfortunately but you know ha- having said that there are you know say what you may about the bbc it does function relatively um relatively uh, transparently and, and or at least in a sort of relatively unbiased fashion and the bbc in the uk is funded by the taxpayers and it? it it's not funded by the government it's funded by the taxpayer you directly pay contribution that goes there of course there will be influence there as well um but there are models that can be leveraged and and used for this purpose Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm back now. So there's another question to be asked. Can I this just is... say one thing about that at the end there? I just think right. that you know, the idea of legislation that forces government into providing funding for independent press is another thing. Do you know what I mean? If if the you know the the, the effect of European law on the functionality of a government is quite incredible, and I think. <coughs> pressurized for there to be a statutory obligation under law for the independent press to be funded by government that's a very different thing than them voluntarily given money or i think you have the same problem with voluntary organizations and philanthropists who are not who are, who are not biased you know are not or are not unbiased i think you have the same problem as you would with government unless we have legislation which forces forces them to create regulation and regulation on themselves as well i think we're on hide into nothing Okay, Priyanka ji, go ahead. Again, again, voice is an issue. Remove your earpiece. Yeah. 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 Speak. Just, just, uh, just. I want to make a comment about donation about. Uh, the people nowadays and um, 10 years ago coming they couldn't trust to pay any donation for any government okay they prefer to pay donation for the private sector more to pay for the government we couldn't trust any government especially what happened after covid-19 i hope that my colleague understand me this is the truth where is our money gone before when we push the government nothing at all the very rich people they have more and more and more extra rich and more money and the poor they dead and hunger we couldn't trust as a private sector to push any government this is of course it's, it's my opinion but it's up to you 
But after all our discussion now, I believe myself that my opinion is right. You will not find even the, the election in America, they waiting to take donation from the people to push this and that democracy or uh, republic. This is a biggest example about what I'm talking about. No private sector, no people will push any government. And I hope that, <laughs> I hope that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Um, before we, uh, we have uh, 15 minutes left for the session of today. And before we continue, I would like to acknowledge uh, Mukunda Subadi, senior journalist, and he wants to speak for, for, for a minute. Please do so. Mukunda Subedi, senior journalist. Uh, uh, one minute time for you. Unmute, unmute your phone. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Cannot see you. Put your video on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just for one minute, okay? So we have to continue to now. I have three more questions to address. And okay. we have 15 more minutes time left. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I have a question. Uh, okay. uh, actually, in, in Nepal, in the almost uh, 40, uh, uh, 45 journalists affected by the COVID-19, and uh, almost uh, 2,000 journalists lost of the job, uh, but government didn't respond anything. And I wondering in the India and US and, uh, and South Korea and the UK and Britain, a lot of country also the lost of the many journalist uh, job. What, what, what is, what are their situation? The, what, what do, what they think about the journalist in the future? Just one little thing. And this question to who? Uh, it's a, it's a, especially the I want Indian senior journalist. Okay, so then, uh, Sis Ray has left already. So uh, Priyanka will uh, let the question. Priyanka is okay. Okay. Go ahead, Priyanka Ji. Absolutely. So, you know, this pandemic is really something that was unforeseen by uh, everyone in the industry and even by the consumers of the news as well. But of course, it remains to be seen how the entire industry really evolves after the pandemic and during the pandemic as well as we are dealing with this uh, uh, at the moment, uh, you know, as, as an industry altogether. But like I had earlier said, you know, that there is going to be a level of increase in the importance that would be given to the journalist and also more established media as well because there will be a, a oversupply of information as we have been talking about social media and the democratization of the news. Uh, uh, you can't, in India especially, you know, in a large country like India where the population is dense, you cannot do away with ground reporting and also ground reporting of established uh, uh, news channels or newspapers who would bring out the truth uh, for the people. So, of course, a level of uh, a change in the way the journalist carries herself or himself in the ground has changed because there's a level of added equipment, uh, personal protection kits and all of that that we have to uh, wear while we go in the ground because now we're looking at a double disaster. Everything that we cover apart from the pandemic is something that is going to, uh, uh, that is going to be apart from the pandemic because and the, an ongoing situation of the pandemic is already there. But it is, it is something apart from the pandemic as well that we have to deal with. So of course, we have to mentally, physically, uh, infrastructurally prepare ourselves for the new era of journalism that is going to come forth as and when we learn to deal with this new normal of the pandemic. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. Priyanka ji, now I have a question. Uh, one of, let me see. Uh, yeah, to Andrea Wen from Spain, the journalist from Spain. Is she? 
-hmm. Andrea Wen from Spain. Here. Oh, okay. Okay. Talking about the journalism in Spain, what do you think the implementation of independent media will be effective or not? Uh, well, in Spain, people question very much the, the governmental press because it is polarized in its stream. So people barely, barely trust uh, the news or the government governmental press. So actually independent journalism is the most popular thing in depending on the city. But actually here people is wide more open to consume uh, news from independent journalists. And also journalists who have their own NGOs or that they try to work uh, together. Um, so I believe that this has improved after this COVID-19 happened because now people is bombed daily with um, news that are quite opposite because depending on, on which source you consume, it's, it's so different. So you question and sometimes you feel like you're being lied to. So that has been, um, that has encouraged to more people to be open to consume news from independent journalism. So that's believe, I believe that's, uh, that's something very good and positive because I personally trust more and prefer independent journalism because uh, those are people who care more about to spread the truth in some way because they are on their own. It's not like they have a governmental agenda they have to follow. So that coming to the freedom of expression, I believe that it's a benefit. And I hope that in the future it grows much more. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, uh, Andrea Wen. And again, go back, go, goes back to uh, Priyanka Sarma. What is the highest rate? on tech journalism in South Asia, South Asian countries related to fact and truth publishing? I believe he is, uh, the way I see he is asking uh, which countries tech journalism we should uh, trust or, or, or have the belief in South Asia. Priyanka Sarma. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Is that is that a question for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the viewers are uh, yeah. To you, yeah, just to you, yes. So, uh, you know, what I think is uh, belief is the death of freedom. And I think all of the people, all of the students, as we have talked about in this entire session, need to be taught research methodology. I think that is the need of the hour for uh, children to be able to comprehend uh, this uh, research methodology at a primary level. So that they can also uh, understand uh, how they have to check the sources, how they have to uh, check the credibility of the news, check the uh, uh, authenticity of a news piece. So, of course, uh, that is something that needs to be focused upon. I think that's the need of the R as of well. Thank you. Thank you. So that's uh, that's the that's the last question. That was the last question. Now, uh, if you have any any queries, uh, any things, any suggestions, any opinions, just we end up with like 30 seconds, uh, one minute note. S start from uh, Imam Suhiazi. Omnaji, this is a great effort done by you. And uh, I also appreciate uh, Madam Koiralaji, who always spend time in different topics and hear the people all around the world. 
and uh, we wish uh, all the best for Koraila Foundation to do this activity continuously. And you should you should uh, come up with the whole bunch of uh, your seminar uh, as a as a book or something like ebook and send it to all of our participants. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you for your suggestion. We will do that ebook definitely. Next, uh, Andrea Wen, please. Um, the, I think that it's very good to have uh, people from all around the world caring on this um, and also trying to do something about it. I believe people have came up with good suggestions and, and a good reflection to make us uh, think more deeply about uh, the way we understand news and the way we, we consume this content. So I feel that they had this, this forum has been very enriching for me as well. And I'm very glad to be able to listen to all these people. It's really enriching. So I'm very happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And next, Fardouz, Oscar. Um, of course, I appreciate all what happened today. It's a very, very good opportunity to be and to listen for each other from many countries around the world and to put our opinion and our seminar on paper to look forward what we shall do in the future. Because now we are running for the peace meeting for our discussion, our new education, peace education and in this opportunity, I would like to thank you and to thank everyone uh, listen to me and especially our collective who make a good opportunity to know every one of you from his country. Thank you. And I'm proud, very proud, of course, with the feminine <laughs> as a gender journalist, women journalists around the world who listening to uh, their colleague around the world. Thank you so much and have a good night and have a good day for the other side of the world. Thank you. Thank you for this Oscar for your thanking, thank, thank you not. And next, uh, Jiang Ming. Yeah. Are you there? You young mean? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I just, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. I, I just very curious about one of our guests today is Andrew Wing. It seems our uh, Wall Street News Agency published the article for her in English. So right. Andrew Wing looks like a Chinese, right? The way uh, I'm interested. So Andrew Wing, you are Chinese origin? You are the same with Dr. Ni uh, You will publish the uh, uh, article for you on uh, December 17th. It's called No Face of God. Is that you? Uh, yes, I have oh. published a few articles in your newspaper. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Then, then, uh, we are old friends. Yes, yes. Yeah. But no, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm, not from, I'm not Chinese. My, okay. my name is Chinese indeed. But I'm not. Okay, but you win. W G N. That's traditional yes. Chinese win, like like a, yes. uh, a premier win Jabo. The that is the, uh, the 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 premier. So the win is very famous in Chinese. Okay. <laughs> so you are not the Chinese. Okay. Okay. A little more question. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go on. Send me articles. I publish for you here. Now we even can do it through Wall Street News satellite. Yeah, let's 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 take the, yeah talk about the point. Uh, I'm just uh, talking about thanking note. Uh, if you have something to say at the end in thirty seconds. <laughs> okay. Next, uh, Sanam Sarmaji, Sanam Arora. Sorry. Um, 
it's it's been a great discussion. It's been really enriching, as Andrea said, to hear so many international perspectives from across different sort of um, you know diverse minds and diverse uh, ideas. So I think it's been really really interesting to hear um, what all yeah, the participants yeah. have said and some very insightful questions as well. And thank you so much for for inviting us and Himanshuji as well. Thank you for um, initiating this discussion. It's been greatly. Um, interesting and, and I hope that these series these intellectual talks on a variety of issues keep continuing and I think that ebook suggestion is fantastic and um so yes. much to take that up yes thank you thank you Sanama Rawazi next Priyanka Sarma please unmute please unmute your microphone Priyanka please unmute Yeah, am I audible now? Yes. So uh, I would just like to thank the foundation, GPK Foundation America, and also Himanshu Bhai. Thank you so much for letting me up, be a part of this amazing discussion. Uh, uh, you know, I think now that the time is that geographical boundaries are blurring, and for us journalists to have a platform like this to come together and discuss the events of the day uh, and the events of the times that we are living in, I think it's of utmost importance. And this uh, uh, this webinar really helped me do just that. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priyanka Ji. Next, uh, Mukunda Subedi. Mukunda Subedi, for your 30 seconds remarks, can unmute your phone. Time is running out, please. Mukunda Subedi, unmute. Next. Sumnadji, next. Yes, Mukunda Ji, unmute, please. Unmute. Go ahead, 30 second remarks. Unmute. Unmute, Mukunda ji. Next, Tarak Soni. Yeah, it was a very uh, fantastic session uh, and informative on the journalism, technology and journalism. And uh, I would like to see that uh, I would like to receive the ebook for the session and uh, we'll see the future with the credibility that people will trust in credibility. Uh, really fantastic job you are doing. Uh, I would like to be in touch with you all. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you. As as uh, Imam Subhiyaji said, yes, definitely we're gonna have the ebook, the global series of virtual conferences that we have concluded so far. This is our ninth series. We try our best to do every week uh, one global series. But due to some circumstances, we couldn't continue for a month. We did seven series already before a month, and yesterday was eight series, and today is a ninth series. So we'll continue every every week, and definitely we'll will bring out the ebook, uh, and, and it will be much more uh, uh, knowledgeable and easier for all, all all of the global citizens to access it and and and, and learn something and gain knowledge for the upcoming generations, which we want better world in the new world. Thanks again. Mukunda um, Subedi again, are you there? Thank you very much. Mukunda Subedi. <laughs> Next, Arun Sundaria, please. Yeah, it was a very nice, engaging session. And hopefully we, everyone, uh, listen to each other and do something useful for the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arunji. Bhagavati Kharka. Bhagavati Kharka. Sweta Lama. Swenta Lama, Swenta Lama. Snaily Desai, Snail Desai. Yeah, 
<clears throat> thanks a lot for inviting me to this uh, session it was a uh, quite informative session uh, i would like to uh, I, i would love if we go as per the suggestion given by this ms sana marora and uh, create one individual platform which has been funded by taxpayer all over the globe and uh, set up one neutral uh, news platform because it's a need of our uh, ultimately we all were discussing about uh, somewhere about the fake news and uh, the news getting suppressed somewhere by the political influence or whatever uh, or by the fund uh, the, the people who are behind the news channel Uh, and it is a common issue around the globe i, I feel after this conference so uh, i feel uh, we can work out on the same and um, uh, and have some uh, good neutral platform and uh, which has been beneficial to uh, people because after all journalism is something connected to each and every uh, field uh, because it's a certain source of information and uh, we need to check on the authenticity uh and genuineness uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot uh, sir for giving me this opportunity to speak and i would like to stay connected to each and every one of you and uh, uh, like whatever i can do i would be uh, i would be like much glad neil bhai neil bhai where are you based where are you based neil bhai i am from gujarat itself. where are you based well, sir well sir gujarat okay. okay good good thank you thank you next uh, last call from kundas very oh okay uh, uh thank you gpk foundation uh, uh, can you hearing me yes yes now i can uh, hear you yes oh uh, actually i am a base uh, in the philadelphia usa right now oh, and uh, thank you so much for gita prasad karala foundation usa chairman mr somnath kimire He is my very good friend since uh, 35 years. He is a childhood friend. He is doing the very good job in here. Uh, actually, you know, the some some journalists are also the confusing this uh, this uh, uh, pandemic time and uh, also the very hard and uh, each other also the no sharing the information. I hope this uh, this conversation also the. sharing lot of knowledge and lot of uh, country situation in the future what what we are going to the facing the big problem and like that i would i would like to again to thanks all of you the another country journalist and love to also the sometimes i only request all of you and the sometimes you publish our country report because uh, some big tycoon media ignoring our country in the, our news that's why i am humbly request all of you please give a small space to our news in country is thank you so much bye thank you mukund ji for for your valuable advice and finally uh, this is the end minute of our ninth virtual global conference by gp koyala foundation america and our central office located in kathmandu nepal which is uh, headed by chairperson honorable sujata koirala on behalf of our chairperson honorable sujata koirala former deputy prime minister of nepal and former foreign minister of nepal i would like to thank from the bottom of our heart to all the panelists who joined today's ninth global conference virtually via zoom platform thank you so much again for your valuable time valuable advices and your um, expertise you sharing uh, on the knowledge of journalism and we i the way i'm not a journalist but the way i see the way i listen to you guys and the way i'm learning is is my learning process every day i learn something new and today uh, i believe in the in the post world of covid-19 like i say new normal in the new world let us be fearless fearless and bravely this that's what uh, i i i trust on you all again fearless fearless and bravely journalists in the field of tech journalism in coming up and from the bottom of my personal opinion and personal you know say and i would love to thank you again for giving valuable time and sharing your knowledge thanks again thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was good connecting. Somnath ji, thank you very much. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. I'm also a uh, doctor, Somnath Jimmy. I also invite you to attend our uh, Zoom conference on August 28th. I okay. hope you send to this group. I will sure. send you sure. the invitation. Then. But Somnath Somnath Somna ji will not speak in, because, uh, in Chinese. What is street, then? What will happen? Street, <laughs> I will. I will ask you again. Fact, 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 well, yeah, that's very good. Except me, 25. Okay. Uh, to uh, our Wall Street real estate forum of foreign estate. Uh, we're doing a forum about real estate. So you just talk anything or just give uh, anything. Okay. Like. So how, we, how okay. is the market today? Thank you very much. Today? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, 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 uh, before we leave, can, can you all suit your personal email in, in the chat box so that we can form a, uh, the group of uh, 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 tech journalism and we update uh, each of our, you know, uh, either personal email or uh, where, where we can be reached personally so that we can see. That's a great idea. I think we all should stay connected. We should have more such meetings in the future. Absolutely. Right, right, right. exactly. So please do so. So, so my email is easy. My email in, in its chat, chat box. Yes. Yeah. My email is easy. My name is Yushami. So we just. Yeah, can you please uh, write it in the chat box so that I can save it in in, 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 a, in a format okay. uh, as a group so that it goes like blast, kind, kind of email blast. Okay. Uh, Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, so thank you, Andrew Wayne. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Looking thank forward you. to another one. Priyanka Sarma, Mukund Sibiri, Parak Shuni Ji, Snehil. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Okay. Arun Sundaria. This will take care. Bye. Uh, effective. Uh, uh, this is an effective program. We all must not only talk. <laughs> Let us work, work, work. Now time has come to prove our work effectively. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.